Well, with Filippo Ganna there at the front, starting to put on the pace. Welcome to stage five of the Dauphiné. A bit of respite today after four tough stages, including yesterday's long time trial that was won by Filippo Ganna. There is a transitional feel to this outing between tizy le and Chantre, just over 160 kilometers with four minor climbs. It's a final opportunity for pure sprinters like Dylan Hrunewagen, although the breakaway could also spring a surprise. Yeah, I think it's going to be a sprint today. It's the last chance for Grunewagen, and I think Bike Exchange will be motivated. They'll control all day. Sure, we would like to have a sprint. I think uh, it's another nice chance for me. We, first place, we want to try to defend the yellow jersey, and uh, if you get help from other teams, we will contribute uh, to the chase. We have to control to, to make it a sprint, of course. Uh, yeah, we only can control the, the breakaway that are not too much guys in the front. But yeah, of course, some, uh, some teams want to drop me and uh, yeah, we have to see what happens. But uh, yeah, we stay as a team together in a bunch and we have to see. Well, plenty of teams were keen to get a man up the road today, so it took over 30 kilometers for the breakaway to form. Jan Bacalantz getting in there for Antemarche Wanted Gobert after taking the first King of the Mountains points. He was joined by Fabian Dubé from Total Energies and Sebastian Schoenberger from B&B Hotels KTM, the most aggressive rider from the breakaway on stage three. Another duo bridged across at Pierre Rolland in the polka dot jersey and Benjamin Thomas, the French time trial champion, who would have been disappointed to lose over two minutes yesterday. Roland was only interested in the five KOM points at the top of the second climb, so he soon rolled back to the peloton, which was being driven along by Bike Exchange Jayco and Jumbo Visma. The early average speed over 45 kilometers an hour, but things eventually calmed down. The main bunch nevertheless keeping the escapees on a tight leash. Well, Bike Exchange were determined to get something out of this Dauphiné with Runa Wagen, but they didn't want to catch the break away too early. The gap creeping back to around two minutes before the two final climbs, the Col du Bois Clair and the Côte de Vergisson, both inside the last 25 kilometers. Other teams then started to get involved with the chase, Unilex Pro Cycling, and in particular the Ineos Grenadiers, who put Filippo Ganna to work on the front. But the four breakaway riders were resisting. The gap stood around 40 seconds as they flew up the final climb. And the nightmare continued for Bruno Wagen. He was dropped yet again, and he wouldn't get back to the front. Up at the front, Dubé was briefly dropped, having skipped a few turns, but he managed to bridge back up to the others. The breakaway still had a chance to win it, especially with a strong ruler like Thomas in the mix. The peloton, though, were absolutely ripping along as they looked to catch them in the final kilometer. Benjamin Thomas opens up now the gap. He starts to sprint. Look at the gap between them. It's the Kofidis rider, the multiple world champion on the track. And Kreiswijk and the rest of the riders have brought this back. Is Wout van Aert going to get him on the line? Who is going to win this stage? Wout van Aert catches them on the line. Wout van Aert, Jordi Mayus on the line. Wout van Aert wins the stage. And Wout van Aert continues to dominate this Dauphiné, a second win for the overall leader, who's also had two second places and one sixth place. No Rune Wagen, but he still had to hold off a charging Jordi Meus in the final. It's his fifth win of the season after great work from Jumbo Visma, with even Primoz Roglic getting involved in the lead-out. I asked uh, the boys to do everything they could, and uh, yeah, if even our GC guys of 60 kilos are pulling in the, in the front, then you know, uh, you have to finish it off. Van Aert taking it by a whisker from Meus with Ethan Hayter, Edvard Boasen Hagen and Hugo Page rounding out the top five. The Belgian champion now over a minute clear of Mattia Catania and his teammate Roglic overall. Hayter goes up to fourth ahead of Jonas Vingegaard. Van Aert also has a 24-point lead in the green jersey standings. Tomorrow it'll be worn by Page, a reward for his consistency this week. Pierre Renault increases his lead in the mountains classification, though the lion's share of the points there will be on offer this weekend. Hayter is still the best young rider, although Juan Ayuso and Matteo Jorgensen are both within 30 seconds. Stage six will take us towards the Alps with almost 200 kilometers from Reef to Gap. 
Four climbs on the menu, including a couple of Cat 2s, but this should still be one for the punchers rather than the pure climbers. And you know who may well be targeting his third win of the race. Thanks for watching and do join us again on Friday.